Hi everybody, Peter of England, bringing you a short video. I'm going to try and make it as short as uh, I've ever made one uh, because I can see that uh, from the analytics on the YouTube uh, um, analytics programs that people like shorter videos and so this is just a, a fun one uh, to cover two important topics and these topics are the type of things that just like the guy who first invented the safety pen or the paper clip uh, unless it's actually shown to you or pointed out to you uh, then you think wow um, yeah never really thought of that before as human kind doesn't so what I'm going to do I want to address two things today I want to address the so-called theories of conspiracies and bring that into some factual relationship to the fact of what are the chances of that not happening? So what I mean by that is, let's look at all the rogue and um, secret and conspiratorial, both genuine and accused, um, conversations and messages and texts and video that have been passed back and forward, let's say just since 2016, uh, November when Donald Trump was uh, elected the first time into the presidency. So imagine there are people like Schiff and Schumer and Feinstein and Newsom and Maxine Waters uh, on, the, um, on the Democratic side and all the gang there um, that are overtly and covertly trying to dethrone that organization. Not only that, you've got all the politicking in the background internationally. You've got Hillary Clinton, you've got Bill Clinton, you've got the fiasco of Benghazi um, in Libya when um, Hillary Clinton as um, Secretary of State was involved in a lot of wrongdoing. You've got people like Cameron and Tony Blair and all these other characters in international politics um, you've got um, Macron and you've got um, Trudeau in Canada and on and on and on with these guys who've all been plotting and all been controlling certain agendas for many, many years. Now, my main question to you is that, as you will realize, the microphone on your laptop, the la microphone on your computer, the microphone on your Android or iPhone, is permanently and consistently recording details whether you like the fact that that's happening or not also the cameras in the street are picking you up there is an ability even for the cameras in the shops to be linked into the surveillance network that are operated by organizations like GCHQ in the United Kingdom the NSA the CIA and other unfriendly uh, data collection agencies worldwide. So the question I ask to you is, and this is the obvious um, elephant in the room type of question, how come with all these conversations that have gone back and forth, forth between various politicians and interest groups, people who are privateers, people who like um, the CEOs that have been up to no good, um, that control some of the biggest hedge funds in the world. Lots of these organizations have been talking back and forward. Lots of people have been plotting. The people like the Iranians, the people like the Saudis, the people like the Syrians, the arch enemies of the West, you would be led to believe, are people like um, the government of China and Russia. They're intelligence agencies, people like Putin, um, ex-KGB. What do you think that the KGB hasn't got on these other um, individuals in the West and uh, elsewhere internationally? They have a lot of things. Look at the situation recently with Hunter Biden. It's taken a shoehorn and a rope to extract any of this information and get it into the public domain. Yet still, the Department of Justice does nothing. The FBI does nothing. It all gets covered over and no one reveals it. So the illusion that there is a nation state, the illusion that there are independent corporations and independent sovereign nations out there in the world 
It's just a blind. They are all on the same side and the new world order isn't yet to achieve its intended aims and its agenda. It's already got there. That is why people like Putin do not blow the whistle. This is why Xi in China just does what he's told. And this is why no one ever rats anyone else out on the other side because they're not on the other side. They're all on the same side. Unless you actually start to get this, then everything that's being played out there is nothing more than cinema to distract you and keep you in the hope and the belief that everything just might work out. It won't. These things, um, your, your iPhone, all the images, all the images you put on WhatsApp, everything is being lifted up into the cloud and they have got everything on everybody. So that's mainly the question. If these organizations that are there supposedly as the bastions of protection, the regulatory society uh, organizations to protect you, then they should be protecting you from the crimes that have gone down. All the conversations that Zelensky's had, all the conversations that Sunak's had, all the conversations of these people are out there and have been recorded. They never use them against them as long as they're playing ball. So that's the, the, main, the main scenario on that one. The next part I'd like to address is another con that's been perpetrated on everybody and it involves pieces of paper, green pieces of paper that get moved around the world constantly. And what we have here, two pieces of paper, one's got 20 written on it and one's got 100 written on it. Do you have any idea what it costs to produce one of these pieces of paper? It costs between four and six cents, dependent upon uh, either your interpretation of inflation or what the Federal Reserve might say uh, are their overheads. But that, these pieces of paper are just that, pieces of paper. But let's use this as an example. Once this gets put into your hand, whether it gets paid into your bank account or whether it gets physically handed to you by someone or by an ATM machine. Um, in the United States, for example, let's look at the, the probably uh, uh, an hourly rate of uh, remuneration or pay let's say, I don't know, 15 to $20 an hour. That means five hours you have to work with your labor and providing service and your sweat equity to pay off that. And it's worth four cents. So it's worth four cents to the Federal Reserve. It then triggers you into thinking that it's worth 100 and the effort and the time that's extracted from you is the point I'm trying to make. Something that's worth virtually nothing, a second, ties up hours of your labor because you've got to earn those things with just a notional value put on them. They could write a thousand on that note. They could write 10,000. And as recently as Janet Yellen might have said, they were even playing up uh, playing with the idea of creating a one trillion note. So imagine the damage that that does when it's put into your hand because you think you're taking something of value, but you're taking something of no value whatsoever. And that's the trick. The promissory note is being passed off as something of value when it points to nothing but itself. The old, old, the, the old idea of the promissory note was it was the promise to give back something that the bank had in possession, which was yours. And so, and so instead of carrying the valuable round, you created a promissory note and carried that around. Much easier to, to deliver and much more secure. So those are the things I wanted to cover today. I think I've done about 10 minutes and... Um, if you like this, please do the usual thing, subscribe and pass it around. Um, more information coming to you very soon on Area 52. If you've never heard of Area 52, then please go onto the Weirbank uh, website and the Removement site uh, and look for the clock. 
There's a countdown on there. I'm hoping to make an, um, a rather large announcement on Area 52 by the solstice, which is June the 21st, 2023. And uh, so please keep uh, tuned on the channel. And uh, Peter Vingen saying thank you.